I'm John Rose. Please like and subscribe to my videos if you like what you see. Thanks. Just do it. Hey, I'm Johnny Rose, John Rose to some. And uh, today I want to talk a little bit about uh, some survival techniques, actually more survival psychology than anything else. Some things that are going to help get you through a critical situation if you ever find yourself in one. I'm sitting out here on the top of my hill in Jessamine County in late winter. It's pretty cold. I'm fairly well dressed for it, but still a little bit chilly. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful day, overcast, late winter, middle of March. So I want to start out with, there's something known as a rule of threes. And um, you can last three minutes without air three hours without shelter, three days without water, and about 30 days, three weeks, eh, about three weeks, I guess, without food, without going into a kind of a critical shutdown situation for your body. So anyway, when you find yourself in a situation, you want to, main thing is remain very, very calm. Your greatest asset that you have, your best toolbox for survival is right up here. It is your survival skills, your ability to utilize common sense, and your ability to calm down and relax, no matter what the scenario may be. I'm dressed fairly well today. I've got uh, this indispensable shamag that I, I wear and carry with me all the time. It's got me through a lot of a, a lot of things. Um, I've got a uh, a nice insulated jumpsuit on and and a couple of other layers underneath when you're heading out and you might you know the weather might be questionable you, you want to be sure that you layer up you can always take things off put things back on one thing you want to avoid doing is you don't want to sweat and get your clothes all wet and then go into a hypothermic situation for this reason unless it's summertime very very you know hot weather you want to steer away from cotton. So I would recommend either uh, synthetic poly materials, um, uh, fleece and that sort of thing. Under Armour makes a lot of really cool, awesome stuff. Um, otherwise, you can go with the old school stuff. I love silk and I love wool. And I wear silk or wool long johns pretty much uh, the, the whole cold season. I hate being cold. do not like cold weather that much. I thrive well in hot conditions. Some people don't. I do. Uh, so anyway, with that in mind, when you if you find yourself in a situation, I used to fight forest fires, and I, I remember being dropped in a fire and, and being like, okay, holy crap, I got to figure out and get myself together really, really quick. Well, even in that kind of critical situation, you got to stop, look around, make sure that you're safe first off. Take some deep breaths. If there's a lot of smoke, you may not be able to take the deep breaths. But breathe as deeply as you can because that will help you to relax. You want to be as relaxed as possible. You want to be as, uh, as comfortable as possible in your surroundings. That's why it's good to uh, go out in the woods, wander around, uh, make this environment friendly for you make this comfortable a lot of people you know the the, the dark woods is, is really scary for them and and that's where the mind comes in you got to watch out your imagination can can uh take off and run with you the sound of a coyote sounds like a, a some crazy woman running through the woods you know who's uh, some spirit that's that's gonna gonna steal your soul don't let that happen uh, look at things for what they really really are so anyway, you can survive. Uh, this is the rule of threes. You can go about three minutes without air. That means if you're in the water, uh, you want to have some kind of flotation that you can make happen. Anything, something, tread water, whatever you got to do to uh, help yourself survive. Um, if you're in a forest fire, for example, which I've, I've been in uh, on a couple of occasions and or a few occasions, then you've got to make sure that that the smoke is not going to take you over or that the flames aren't going to take you. So you've got to remain calm, though, regardless. And that means taking deep breaths. That means nice and strong and get yourself grounded. Put your feet firmly on the ground. 
take those deep breaths in all the way, not up here, not here, but all the way down to a deep, deep belly breath. Something that, uh, you know, that, that, that in yoga is, is the, the Tan Tien. It's, it's martial arts, the Tan Tien breath. That's where your strength comes from. So you take that deep breath, then you breathe it out. In through your nose, out through your mouth. This helps you to get centered and grounded. You can go to the most, the simplest possible thoughts. You're counting your breaths. One, two, three. You, know, you go on down the line. This keeps things very simple. You want to keep things as simple as possible when you're in a survival situation. You want to do that in everyday life as well. But in a survival scenario, you want to particularly be careful about that. Okay, so. Once you got that, you got your situation assessed. Next, you need to look at shelter. What am I wearing? Am I wearing a t-shirt and jeans? If so, I might be screwed if I'm out in the woods and it's 55 degrees. Uh, hypothermia can set in in conditions that are you know, between 50, 45, 50, 60, even up to 70 degrees. And higher than that. It depends on your body constitution and, and your state of health. So... You don't want to sweat if you can help it. That's why layering is such an important thing. If you find that you're out in the woods and you're trying to get a shelter built and you're, you know, you're, you're pulling branches down and you're, you're really active, you're trying to figure out what to do, get a fire going, and you're starting to sweat, you want to start shedding layers. If you've got to get stark naked to do this, do it. Whatever it takes to survive. And then just start adding layers back in as you start cooling down. That way you're always going to be at a, in a comfortable setting. Your clothing is your first line of defense when it comes to shelter. Next, you want to gather things, gather uh, branches, uh, leaves, any of that sort of thing, and you want to keep yourself off the ground. If you're on the ground, then that then you're going to be sucking moisture up through the ground. Your body is going to be a heat sink, and it's and the earth is just going to suck the uh, heat right out of your body. So you want to stay above ground. So that's why you want to lay down sticks, lay down piles of leaves, whatever you got to do, and then cover yourself up with whatever you have left over. The next stage is going to be fire. You can go about three hours without shelter. Fire is part of your shelter thing. You want to stay warm. That's also used in, in purifying water, which you can go about three days for uh, without suffering, but you want to be able to purify that water. And there are several methods of doing that. The most uh, valuable one probably is boiling that water. You filter it as best you can, and then you boil it to kill whatever's in it. You can't get rid of chemicals and things like that this way, but you can get fairly pure water if you're in the woods. You're not going to have to worry as much about chemicals. Um, maybe, but, you know, you know, don't worry about that right now. Anyway, so um, if you can get fire... If you have matches or a lighter, it's always a good thing to carry, your everyday carry. That's a whole nother video, things you would carry with you. Otherwise, if you've got a carbon steel knife, which I don't recommend carrying anything but a carbon steel uh, sheath knife, if you can. Um, and uh, uh, Mora, Mora makes some good ones. There, there are a bunch. I sell Mora's because I believe in them so much. Anyway, uh, and you need some kind of hard stone. Flint is, is a great one. Um, uh, quartz crystal is a really, really good one for that. And what you're doing is you're shaving off tiny shards of steel off your knife. Uh, it's not the, the carb, it, you know, it's not the uh, the stone, the flint itself, but it's the tiny shards of steel that, when you strike that, it heats it up to a very high temperature, and and that creates your spark. Then you need a material that those sparks can land in. Char cloth is ideal. Most of us, unless we were born in the 19th century, 18th century and before, we do not carry char cloth around with us. Uh, I, I can teach you how to make that. That's another video yet. But anyhow, um, otherwise you want to go to cedar trees or something where there's a nice um, hairy bark or get vines, things like that, as long as it's not a poison ivy vine or something like that. You definitely don't want to do that. So know your vines. Grape vines are a really good one. Cedar trees are great. Uh, there, there are a lot of things. Chaga, if you if you live in the in the north, uh, Michigan and places like that, uh, where there are, are birch trees, any place where there are birch trees, you can sometimes find chaga, which makes it's great for receiving a spark. 
also some of the um, uh, tree fungi funguses that, that you can dry but you're probably not carrying this stuff around with you you need to find something find a branch that is leaning over and you want to get it on the underside so that the water hasn't saturated that branch so that you can get the drier parts of it and and you fluff that inner bark up and make something that's as fine and fluffy as possible and that will possibly take a spark then you want to start gathering materials for that you, you want to gather the, the thinnest tiniest um, um, uh, materials uh, twigs and things like that and then slowly build up build up till you get finger size then you get wrist size then you get your bigger size it's going to get you through you know through the long haul but anyhow you want to get that stuff together and always keep this stuff off the ground if it's raining keep it dry stick it in uh, uh in, in your clothes stick the, your tinder materials under your arm something that you can heat that up and disperse the moisture in it you want to even stuff leaves if you if you can find uh dry leaves stuff them in your clothes between layers of clothing and your skin so that you have that that air layer that's an insulating layer that keeps you warm and uh, as i said before it's essential to keep yourself up off the ground um you then you want to if you can get a spark and get that fire going that's awesome you can also use a battery your car battery works is a great thing you can short that out to get a spark you want to have your materials all ready that's where you need to take your deep breaths be relaxed be calm be clear be resolute keep everything as simple as possible it's to keep it simple stupid the kiss uh, technique that is so vitally important in a survival scenario <clears throat> okay so say you get your shelter and you get your fire you're pretty much good to go now you're going to survive next is going to probably be water you can survive three days without water it's three minutes without air three hours without shelter three days without water three weeks without food so don't worry about food right now if you have anything you can get a couple of calories with get those i can talk about some wild plants trail nibble things like that that you can get a minimal amount of of uh of calories and then later on we'll go into things where you get your real calories and you can thrive uh, but for the meantime we got this going on so you want to get water the last thing you want to do is drink contaminated water now contaminated water contains pathogens contains chemical compounds all sorts of things so the best method of purifying water in the wild is going to be boiling it. Now, in an urban setting or in an, a, an area where there are pesticides, herbicides, things like that, it's going to be a different story because you cannot boil water and purify it to get rid of those things. There, you'll need some other type of filtration to do that. If it comes down to life or death, if you're going to be drinking some water that has some pesticides, herbicides, or chemicals in it, as long as you're going to survive we'll take it from there. You know, it's a matter of how long you want to continue on. So boil the water if you can get a fire. Otherwise, filter it out as best as you can. Charcoal is an excellent filter. If you can find charcoal from an old fire, you can filter it that way. If you're lucky enough to have a water filter or some kind of water purification method, bleach is good, eight drops per gallon of bleach. Uh, two to three drops a liter, something like that is good. However, bleach does not kill everything, and you have to let it sit for about 30 to 45 minutes, depending on the temperature. The colder the temperature, the longer you have to let that sit. Okay, so uh, I'm going to come to the close of this video right now because it's a lot of information, and we'll get to food and such later on. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful day, and uh, enjoy the outdoors. Enjoy everything. Take care. I'm Johnny Rose.